Welcome back to our cosy little hell fort. Uh, this time we'll be finishing off the map, addressing some of the issues that we found last time, generally giving a texture makeover and doing the finishing touches. So the first thing I wanted to address was that uh, I saw that the level sort of ended once you were over this bridge. Uh, so I'm going to address that by introducing a couple of new monsters. Uh, I'm going to move this so that we have a nice trip wire for the player to trigger once they get the red key. Let's hit L and flip that line def around. Uh, I'm going to say that once they go over that, there are going to be, let me see, uh, some maybe some doors that open. There's walk repeatedly. There's, yeah, walk once, door open, stay fast. And we're going to tag that with a new tag, number six. And I thought, I've got this space inside the pillar, so maybe I can hide some monsters in there, and the player might not be expecting them. Uh, I'm going to do my utmost to draw this thing. Uh, let's use the uh, draw a rectangle instead, just to save me the headache. There we go, okay. Uh, now you can see that the editor has given us this sector inside, this sector outside. We really want the pillar to be a sector as well so that we can affect it. We can't uh, make any changes to void space. So I'm going to hit M to go into make sectors mode, and then you can point to any space and click inside it, and UDB will try to work out that there's another sector that could be there. Uh, and this can work if you've got sectors that are somehow split down the middle and still connected, uh, and various other cases as well. You can uh, do some special editing with this. Let's do the same thing again. That one there. Make a sector where there's empty space. All right. So now we need to make those pillars again by pulling these down. Okay. And now we'll need to apply the door texture again. Looks good. And there's going to be uh, something we need to think about here, because when this is up, the inside of the of the, uh, the inside of this pillar is going to be down on the floor still, because this wasn't tagged with tag two. So uh, I'm actually thinking, what the, what's the game going to do here? when it sees tag 2 and says SR lift lower weight raise. Uh, I genuinely don't know what it's going to do with so many nested tag 2s. So I'm going to untag those. And I'm just going to make this and this part of the higher floor. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And uh, I said that this was going to raise 64 uh, to there, so that's going to look fine once we do it. I'm going to raise this floor as well, and uh, because the ceiling's already at floor level, I'm going to dive underneath and raise the ceiling at the same time. And you can see I'm raising, well maybe you can't see that I'm uh, raising them both at the same time, because it's pretty unclear from what I'm doing. Let's just separate the floor and ceiling so that you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to put the floor down to there, I'm going to put the ceiling down to... there, and let's decorate the inside of these. Uh, they don't have to be anything special. I'll just use Ash Wall 4 again, because they're not really meant to be noticed by the player at all. Uh, this can be another uh, wooden kind of texture. We can use what's got a, a sort of border on the top of it. Maybe that, Maybe that would work. You know, it sort of does. I'm going, to, I'm going to use it like that. All right. Inside here, we are going to stuff a couple of Hell Knights. And they will wait in ambush, uh, because they can't hear anything outside the pillars until the player uh, activates them. And we're going to make this and this tag six so that they react to the tripwire. All right. And I'm also going to take a couple of these uh, shells that were 
a bit unnecessary last time and put them over here. All right, so that'll solve our uh, level kind of running out of steam problem. I'm going to add a couple of secrets as well, and one of the uh, secrets I like the most is uh, secrets that get you outside, uh, because it feels like you're not meant to be there when uh, previously this has been uh, only used for scenery. Uh, so I'm going to make a little bit of a balcony here. Doesn't have to be complicated. I'm just going to manipulate some sectors. Let's make this go up here. So we've got we've still got the wall uh, blocking the player's view of our uh, trickery around this corner. Uh, let's make the secret part of this room. So I'm going to raise my floor up to there. And this is going to be now part of our balcony. So let's put these let's put these down there. So that the player might be able to see that there's something outside, but it's not uh, totally clear what it is. I'm going to square this off and make a border. Uh, let's see. Good to manipulate some vertices there. Let's join these sectors with Shift J. Let's join these sectors with Shift J. Okay, so now I want that to be the top of a set of stairs, and I'd like to set up some stairs down here. Let's see what that looks like. Looks good to me. We can use uh, this texture for our balcony, we can use it for the top of the wall as well. Again, don't have to do anything super special here. I might come back, take another pass at this uh, next time. Let's see. I think I want I want uh, this wall to be there to stop the player stepping off here. Actually, you know what? I'm going to lower this a bit. And I'm going to actually give myself some steps to fill out the missing texture. And to stop the player just wandering off here, I'm going to do what I did with the windows and put another line all the way around here, and that line is going to be a fence. Uh, let's look at our middle textures. Uh, maybe mid bars one. Oh no, that's too high. Let's have a look. What's in mid? That's by 72. This one will do. We'll do both sides. And if we look at this in the 3D view, uh, you can see that it's there, but uh, they're hovering in the air. And we can use shift and down and up to change that. Alternatively, if you want fences to spring from the lower side, then you can just set the lower unpegged flag and that, that will do it by itself. All right. And again, all that's done is done the texture to actually box the player in, we need to set the property impassable and block monsters. I can't remember if in Vanilla Doom one implies the other, but uh, we'll just be safe. Okay, so let's give the player uh, a bit more ammunition as a prize here. Uh, what else could I give them? Maybe some health. I'm trying to be wary about putting too much health in the level, uh, like I said before. You know what? We don't have any armor in this map, so let's give them some green armor. All right, and uh, to get into the secret, uh, I'd like to make these sectors darker. Uh, control and scroll down to do that. Maybe to 80. And that makes it unclear how many monsters are in here, but it also gives me some uh, room to make a secret here. I'm going to put a ceiling onto this sector, 
and drag it down. Uh, that'll do. Up around peg that. And I'm going to use the floor here to form our door. Uh, set the brightness level. Uh, we want the ceiling there as well. And for this, we're going to use a separate texture. Brick, uh, what? Let's see. Yeah, it's clearly, it's clearly a different texture. I'm trying to gauge the uh, light level, which will allow the player to just about see that it's different. Yeah, maybe that. Okay. And we're going to use a light action. Uh, it's going to be a floor action. Uh, switch once, uh, not ceiling lower to floor. Maybe we want to pop open this instead. Switch once floor, raise, floor, raise, floor, raise, floor, lower, switch once floor, lower to lowest floor. And we're going to tag that 7. And we're going to set that tag 7 as well. Okay, now we have to mark this sector as secret. Uh, to do that, that's just a sector effect. Uh, the special is number 9, and that tells the game when the player first enters this sector, count them as having collected a secret. All right, now that we've done that, I wanted to see if I could do anything about this. Uh, I wondered, uh, because this trap springs very slowly, is there a door that uh, does the same thing? There's, there's walk repeated door. Well, you know what? This is walk repeated door open stay, but uh, because I only want this to happen once uh, and the door will already be open, walk repeated is okay. Uh, having said that, walk once door open stay fast is existent, so I'm going to do that instead. Uh, and that's walk once door open stay tag one fast, uh, and that will make this peel back a lot uh, more quickly. All right. Uh, the other secret I wanted to put in this level uh, was to give the player a route to get here, and I think I'm going to do that by just giving them a little corridor from here over to here. Okay, let's see how that looks. All right, so I'm going to make this sector and give it a higher ceiling so that the player can drop down. Uh, we'll put some goodies over here uh, so that the player uh, has a reason to get here. Maybe a medikit. Some armor bonuses. And you know what? Let's give them the computer map as well. And let's hide this secret somehow. We're going to make a little doorway as before. Let's lower the ceiling of this uh, corridor a bit. And we'll tag this, tag 8. Now I'm going to try to think of uh, a way to open this that isn't just running up to the wall and hitting it. Do you know what? I am going to use a gun type line def. Usually I don't like them because they're quite unclear in Vanilla Doom uh, when you're meant to use one, but I think I have a way to indicate it. We will see. Let's build a little corridor here. And we're going to raise this up. Uh, what floor height's this? This is uh, height 128. So I'm going to raise this up to... Oh, sorry, I, I read the height. Uh, floor 136 is what I mean. And so I'm going to add two uh, notches to that. Uh, bring it up twice. It's going to be floor 152. And I'm going to put a switch texture, SW1BRN2. And manipulate that with shift and the arrow keys so that it is 
down the end of this tunnel. There aren't really any uh, textures that look shootable in uh, Vanilla Doom or Vanilla Doom 2. Uh, so one of the things that you can do is put a switch down at the end of a tunnel where the player wouldn't be able to see it. All right, I quite like this because the pillar usually blocks your view of it and you have to be in quite a precise location to see it. So uh, I think I'm going to go with that. And we'll use uh, basically whatever gun type line def I can. Let's see, what, which ones do we have? We've got floor raised to lower ceiling, we've got floor raised to next higher floor, floor raised by two units uh, from edge and uh, fl fraggle script execute. I've never used that. What about gun repeated? Door open stay, that is exactly what I want. We'll use, uh, yeah, tag eight, was it? All right, now I think I arranged this so that uh, it was actually the floor that was going to peel down, so I don't want to do that anymore. Instead of that, I'll just use... Uh, what will I just use? If I use door open stay, uh, a door will rise until eight units below uh, the nearest... I, th I think it's eight units below the adjacent... Uh, height of the height of the lowest adjacent sector. I think it is anyway, so that might look all right. All right, and because uh, these are going to be the edges of a door, I'm going to give them the door track. I'm going to hit L to make them unpegged. And that will give us our second secret. All right, let's make this a bit darker. We're going to make the walls uh, not quite as regular stony to indicate that maybe this place hasn't been visited in a while. Once again, ash wall 4. And then the player can drop down there, collect the chain gun, and the goodies here. Uh, one of the things you've got to think about when adding secrets like this is uh, what happens if the player breaks the sequence of the map. Uh, in this case, uh, if they came down here without opening this trap, uh, then they would be trapped themselves. Uh, what I can do for that is just say that when the player walks over this line, it's going to do the same as that line and open up the trap. 109, w1.open stay fast, number one. And that is another thing that I can do, actually, is uh, if they come at this from the other side, maybe they've got something to worry about here as well with a couple of imps. And I'm putting them on the edges so that they're not immediately obvious to the player when they come into this room. All right. Another thing, I also wanted to add a corridor just back to here because I, I like it when maps uh, give you different locations in rooms you've been to before, if that makes any sense. Let's see how this looks. If we put this up to here, and make that our castle outside texture. Uh, how long is this line? This is uh, length 40. I'm going to see if I can arrange this so I've got a length 24-ish uh, line. I'll do. Because that means I'll be able to use the support 3 texture to uh, join these two things together. That also gives a nice little platform for maybe another imp uh, just to snipe us from. Uh, we've got to be careful now that we've added another opening into this room uh, that we have some sound blocking lines so that we don't wake up the monsters here while we're fighting. So I'm going to draw two new ones, go into sound propagation mode and select those to sound blocking so that the monsters don't wake up from the fight outside. Uh, darken this a bit. See what that looks like. And again, maybe let's move one of the rewards out to here so the player has a reason to go there. There are a couple of other things that I wanted to do to adjust this level. Uh, I've been flying around this structure in the middle, uh, thinking that looks awful every time I go past it. So I'm going to adjust this a bit. I'm going to try to make this a fountain. Uh, 
And that's going to make it a bit shorter, and I'll good, I'm going to add some more circular sectors around it as well. Uh, do I still have a radial drawing on? Yes, I do. This is fantastic. I've wanted this for such a long time. Uh, let's see if I can actually get the uh, right place to radial draw something. Oh, what am I doing? All right, I want to just move those. I want to get close to this top vertex. All right, I think uh, I think that's where I want it to be. So let's open that circle tool again. Uh, I don't want 32 sides, actually. I'd, I'd like to reduce that to 16. There's no need to have 32 sides for a vanilla map. Let's put that there. Let's put that there. And you know what? Let's make a pond around the fountain as well. There we go. All right, so having done that, we'll need to uh, adjust our sectors a bit. We're going to take that down. We're going to pull that down. We're going to pull that down. All right, now we need a, a stony little texture. Uh, let's see. I don't really like this stone texture, but I'm going to see how it looks. I've definitely done worse things in my life. Okay. So let's take these and put a stony flat on top of them. Uh, this one will do. Let's put some... Uh, well, we, we had a, a bloody themed castle, so let's put some blood in the fountain. And I'm going to add a couple of uh, notches in the waterfall for it to flow down from. I'm uh, hoping that I'm counting these correctly. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. I think I've uh, I think I've messed this up, but I'm going to I'm going to do three notches on this one. One, two, three, four on this one. All right, let's lower those. Got to do a bit of uh, fine texturing here that I'm just going to shortcut very badly. Just copy and paste everywhere. And then we'll select where our falling textures are going to be. Was that it? Maybe. B fall. And we want to make these the blood flat as well. I'm wondering if I might be able to break the rules of the uh, of using flats here and have a border around the fountain that's uh, equal with the stony floor. And I think that looks pretty good. Uh, the other option I might have is to select everything here. Oh, I, I don't have the uh, I don't have the liquid texture down there. Select all my flats here. And just pull them up once and then have a raised border instead. Yeah, I, I think I'll stick I'll stick with that. That looks okay. Alright. I think that looks a lot better than it used to. Now let's do something to this top room to make it look a bit less bland. Uh, I might add a couple of uh, decorations, maybe some bookshelves up here. Uh, 128 unit wide sectors are usually good because the set the textures come in that uh, width. Uh, what, are the, what are the book uh, textures called? I think they're called pan for panel. Oh, is there only this one? I thought there was a wider one as well, but uh, I must be confusing it with texture packs. All right, so there's a bootcase there. I'll put a double wide one down here. So you can see there's a ton of stuff you can do just by 
manipul uh, manipulating sectors around, changing floors and ceiling heights. You can make the apparently limited uh, functionality of the Doom Engine really go a long way. All right, so down here I remember uh, being displeased with this because it cuts off and it looks very out of place and technical. I wonder if one of the switch textures might work. Maybe this one. You can see what it looks like if we uh, arrange it so that the board is on the top there. Uh, it, it's not great, I'll, 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 I'll give you that, but it, it sort of works. I'm, I'm going to leave it like that for now. And I don't dislike it enough to uh, uh, cause a hang-up on the rest of the tutorial for it. I'll put it like that. Uh, let's have a look at a, a dingier kind of texture for this down here. Maybe stone three. Yeah, that changes the mood of the room uh, quite drastically, doesn't it? I'm going to add a couple of alcoves here. Make these for the water as well. And you can really do so much with this. Uh, I could easily spend hours just uh, floating around here, adding new sectors, taking bits away. Don't worry, I won't. But there's a lot you can do. Maybe put some uh, candelabras down here. My daughter, uh, we were looking through the Halloween stuff last year. And, uh, and she took out the candelabra and said, hey, let's put up this uh, Halloween menorah. I'm going, to, I'm going to lower these as well so that there's just room enough for the, for the monsters to get out. You have to think about as well what happens if the player falls down here. Um, Maybe I would put a switch here to raise these as well, but in this map it doesn't matter because the player shouldn't be able to get there anyway. But if the player is in a situation where they might fall into something unexpectedly, uh, you'll want to put a switch and maybe raise tag two just to make sure they have a way out. Let me copy and paste this bootcase. This should be more metallic, I think. Just control R on all the sides of it. Uh, let's see, can I, is there any way I can make this look good? I just control R on all of them there. And now I'm going to see if I can pull this one so the board is that side and make this look like it's in the middle. There we go, it's not perfect, but it looks okay. And again, adding light sources, adding whatever you please to here. Let's do the same thing uh, to this corridor. And I'm making quite irregular sectors here to make it look more like it's uh, rocky and uh, not uh, as kempt as the rest of the castle is.
All right, is that is that basically all we want to do? Let's give it a test. Oh, that was a lucky miss. Yeah, and immediately this makes this a lot more interesting as well, because uh, that imp has the opportunity to get me from there. All right, let's uh, go into this room, get the shells. Now, you see, that is so much better. The trap springs, and the player's now actually caught in it and doesn't have the opportunity to just back out and run away. When you're working with the uh, original Villila uh, Doom format, you have to be a bit creative sometimes with the actions available to you. Alright. Let's go to our newly refurbished basement. Oh, where's the chain gun gone? Ow. Caught on the wall. I was lucky to survive that. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. Oh, 6% health. Let's make a break for it. Did I ever pick this up? No, I didn't. That's great. All right. Oh, so the imps up there. I could do a bit more with these uh, ceilings if I uh, made some more variations in height there this room would look a lot more interesting and less boxy I can just just possibly get it from there uh, if I were playing with vanilla controls I would have to wait until I was on the same level no I can't quite believe it either Let's check these secrets while I'm here. Yeah, I might lower this a little bit as well. But it's not bad. Alright, so let's uh, trip the secret now. Let's open the door. Let's watch as our pillars raise. Um, <laughs> flailing on my keyboard, trying to find the where I put my super shotgun. Come back here. All right, and we've arrived with the red key. We can go down here. Collect our bonuses. I forgot to tag this sector of secret, so uh, we'll do that. Otherwise, I think this is a pretty workable map. Well, let's make our escape. Right, so the last thing I want to do to this map, after having checked that my sound is still working, is uh, let's tag that secret. I want to make this entire sector secret, so let's put special 9 on there. And I want to show you how to implement difficulty levels as well. Uh, depending on the difficulty, uh, Doom can filter uh, the objects in a level. Uh, so if we look at the Medikit, for example, it has three flags, easy, medium, hard. Uh, so maybe on the hard mode, uh, which is ultra violence and nightmare, we don't want this Medikit to appear. Uh, the other way around, maybe on easy, 
we want to give the player a bit of a break and not spawn that Hell Knight at all. You can even replace things by using a sort of two-step procedure. Let's make these not appear on easy and instead add a couple of imps and make these exclusively appear on easy. So that now if the player is playing on easy, these will not spawn, the imps will spawn instead. And you can do the same thing all over the map. Maybe uh, these only appear, maybe he only appears on medium and hard. Maybe the second one only appears on hard. Maybe there's no demon blocking your way on easy. And, and so on. And you can remove health items on higher difficulties. You can add monsters on higher difficulties. Uh, you can even add health items on, on other difficulties. There's a trick that uh, Mount Erebus uses, one of the maps from the original Doom, where the blue key is in a different place depending on uh, your difficulty level. Uh, I could, for example, make the red key not appear there on easy and instead just hand it to you as soon as you get up here and you don't have to do the jump across. So let's go through this on easy now. Uh, the I'm too young to die difficulty or hey not too rough are considered the easy levels. And I'll just uh, zoom my way through this. You would remove, probably realistically, you'd probably remove a lot more of these monsters for easy. But there's the point I was making that now, instead of the two big enemies up here, we've just got some imps. They are relatively easy dispatched, who have spawned instead. Right. And uh, yeah, we did get credit for that secret this time. So that's looking pretty good. That in so many videos is how to make a working Doom map. Uh, I'm going to come back to this once more to demonstrate some things you can do with the UDMF format. And then I also want to change flavors as well and show you how to make a more puzzle focused level as well, which I'll just do in one video. I won't put the detail into it that I have here. But here it is. This will be uh, map 01 of ramp 2022, and I hope uh, to see your creations there as well.